and um, words to describe Catherine are lovely, juicy, <laughs> alive, and colorful. So come on down. <laughs> child to two parents who loved each other and were committed to both each other and starting a family. I was a wanted child, they always told me, and I felt it too, as they tried to conceive for a long time and I was all they got. My father was born the youngest of three into a working class family in Freeport, Long Island, New York. His mom stayed at home and his dad worked for Standard Oil to support the family. He had a painfully normal childhood, as he describes and spent his time at the beach and in the ocean as a kid. He got along with his family well, although he, didn't spend, he said he didn't spend much time with his siblings as they were much older than he was. He was a natural artist and very sensitive, according to his sister. In 1971, he moved to London, Ontario with his wife to avoid the Vietnam draft that was happening in the US. He had just finished a graphic design diploma in college in Chicago and figured he'd serve the world better with art than with killing people he'd never met. His first marriage ended when he found his then wife kissing another man whom she eventually left him for. My mother was born the oldest of three into a working class family outside of Lucan, Ontario. Her dad was a town mechanic and her mom stayed home with the family, much to her chagrin. My mom remembered closeness and good times when she was very young, but she often, also often talked about her mom's alcoholism and what an embarrassment and shameful thing it was, especially living in such a small town. She resented her mom for this and wasn't very close with her in her adult life. My mom moved to London, Ontario for nursing school and her bachelor's degree and eventually ended up teaching nursing at both the college and university. She went back to school when she turned 50 and got her Master's of Science in Nursing, and she ended up winning the gold medal for the highest mark in the entire province. She spent the last five years of her life coordinating a collaborative program between the college and university, which essentially empowered students in a variety of ways. This was such a contribution that there was an award given out every year at the college still, called the Judy Weed Award for Clinical Excellence in Nursing. My mom also loved to swear and speak her mind regardless of what people thought of her. She was alcoholic and her alcoholism res resulted in her death when she died in a drunken fall. <sighs> Can this not be on the time? <laughs> I didn't budget for the crime. Okay. My father and mother met through mutual friends and had gone on a few dates. My mother always said my father was too needy and she didn't like him at first. They only went on three dates and didn't see each other again for a couple of years till they re-met in the grocery store. They were together for four years before my mom went to Donwood, an alcohol rehabilitation center in Toronto. There was no AA then. They simply gave her a drug and told her not to drink. Right after her time at Donwood, she found out she was pregnant with me. I became her drink, as she now had something to devote all of her tireless type A energy to. She began saving for my med school fund when I was in the womb, because she wanted me to be the doctor that she felt she should have been. She never really felt that she was enough, she told me. She loved being pregnant and said it was the best time of her life. She also loved taking me for walks in the woods behind our house when I was little, and playing in the mud together. In general, though, she said the transition of being a career woman to a mother was challenging for her. She didn't know what to do with me and felt sometimes like leaving both me and my dad. In my family, I learned that the world is a tough place to live. There is no support out there, either spiritually or materially. The only option is to work really hard and be successful. Women ran the show in my family and typically took on traditionally masculine jobs and characteristics. My mom made more money than my dad, was also very emotionally shut down, was the disciplinarian, 
Well, my dad was a safe parent, the compassionate nurturer. As the only child who happened to be a girl, I was expected to excel at school and take the world by storm career-wise when I grew up, and also embody enough physical strength since I was the strong one in the family. Because I was bigger and stronger than either of my parents, I did all the heavy lifting and yard work from the time I turned 12. I was always told, you're such a big, strong, healthy girl. This was a compliment and, and made me feel empowered. I felt like I could do anything. Also in my family, I learned that there is no problem without a chemical solution. We were a highly medicated family, both with prescribed drugs and non-prescribed drugs. I was given Ritalin for seven years growing up for ADHD, as well as copious amounts of painkillers to combat my endless headaches, probably from the Ritalin. As I got older, I bonded with my mom by drinking and with my dad by smoking weed. I really enjoyed being high and away from this world because this world felt like a lot of pressure to me. I learned that I was responsible for my family's emotional well-being. It was my duty to balance the emotional climate at home and try to create some kind of equilibrium. This seemed to be the trade-off for having simply been given everything, as my parents often said. I was pretty, smart, sociable, physically strong, ferried, ferried around to different piano lessons and sports, uh, etc. This also contributed to my feelings of guilt. I had a deeply rooted guilt, or er, deeply rooted guilt, and was an overly responsible child. I secretly felt that everything was my fault, as I was so over-focused on. The flip side was that I felt very important. Things were always about me. I was always a center of attention. I learned that I could do anything that I wanted to in this world, and that I was a strong, powerful woman. I learned that relationships were important, as long as I didn't talk about how I felt with anybody. It was never safe to truly connect with someone else, or make any mistakes. I learned not to show weakness, physically or emotionally. It was safe to feel happy, grateful, attractive, successful. And it wasn't safe to feel angry, or sad, or insecure. To live inside my system, I became the strongest, most intelligent, prettiest little girl you'd ever met. On the outside, I looked perfect. But I was like the shell of a human. I had learned to completely numb out my feelings. I learned to distance and defend myself. Uh, I learned to distance and defend myself from both my mom and teachers in school, as I was often described as a problem child <clears throat> and was separated from other kids. I was told that I was a bad girl so many times that I began to consciously act out to give the adults what they were expecting. I also learned to rely only on myself for protecting me and making things happen for me. I became a master chameleon. I learned to alter myself to avoid conflict at home by telling white lies, walking on eggshells, and shutting down parts of myself so as not to create any ripples or unnecessary drama. I learned how to read body language and people's energies because this helped clue me in to what I was walking into and would determine which mask I would wear. I became mysteriously laid back to counterbalance the anxiety in the house. There was no room for my feelings unless they were good ones. The world felt like an unfriendly place to me, and so I learned to defend myself. There was always something out there that I needed to protect myself from. I learned that it was only safe to show up if I looked a certain way, and that it was just too dangerous to express or feel emotions because that would mean an attack. And so I numbed out, and I didn't cry for 15 years. As a result, I wasn't able to truly connect with the world. Because I was stuffing all my feelings, I felt a lot of anxiety. Everyone thought I was so happy and well-adjusted, and inside I felt powerless and like a victim. I was depressed, and I used to get panic and anxiety attacks to the point where I used to call 911 because I thought I was actually going insane. I self-medicated with alcohol, drugs, and adrenaline sports, as well as with sleeping around, cheating on boyfriends, and generally objectifying men. Everything was fine in the world if I had a beer in one hand, a cute boy's hand in the other, and we just shared an activity that could have killed us, but we made it out alive. More recently, I used yoga, meditation, energy work, and eating organic food to not feel my feelings. When I lived in the white light, no one could penetrate me with their bad energy, and I felt safe. I passive-aggressively judged others who didn't share my clearly enlightened lifestyle. 
<laughs> Focusing on being a spirit rather than a human was the perfect way to continue to repress and stuff feelings, especially anger and sadness, either of which were permitted in my spiritual life. I felt completely alone, and even though I looked like I had so much love in my life, in, re in reality I didn't know how to reach out and love or be loved. I apologized to my ex-boyfriends, who I wasn't faithful to, left abruptly, and generally treated with very little respect. I didn't know how to be in a relationship, and I didn't know how to truly be close to you, even though that was what I wanted more than anything in the world. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry for gaining your trust and then severing our connection so quickly and leaving. I can't imagine how this must have felt for you. I apologize to Ryan, my partner. Even though I'm not sure where things are going between us, I want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for distancing when you wanted to be close. And I'm sorry for being defensive and for not saying that I'm sorry more. After all of this, what do I stand for? I stand for living in the flow and truly surrendering to what the universe has in store. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I stand for staying in... What does that mean? Two minutes. Right. Two minutes. I stand for staying in my power and being, being true to myself. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I was supposed to stop. <laughs> Whatever. You people in your time. Okay. <laughs> I stand for staying in my power, being true to myself, no matter what the consequence. I stand for self-love and compassion, and I pledge to love myself regardless of where I may find myself. I stand for authentically showing up in a relationship as completely myself, and not moving the goalposts like I have done in the past to avoid rejection. I stand for staying in my 50% in my half of the relationship and not trying to control other people. I commit to speaking my honest truth and showing up fully as all of myself in this world. I commit to living my purpose and doing the work that I know that I am here to do. I will listen to my gut feeling and honor my needs and I'll follow my inner guidance. I will show up fully in all relationships just as I am, regardless of what other people think. The skills, strengths, and gifts that I have to extend to this world are compassion, empathy, love, listening skills, intuition, leadership, intelligent, intelligence, physical awareness, and perseverance. I have informed and sent my constitution to my dad, my uncle, my stepmom, and my godmother. Dad, I have been mad at you for letting me down when I was little. I didn't feel like you were there for me emotionally. I felt like I was always defending you from mom. And I've been harboring resentment and feeling like you owe me. This has been showing up passive aggressively in my behavior with you and I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for not being more direct. I would like to ask you to help remind me that it's safe to show up just as I am and that I'm enough. Thank you for doing the best you could. I know you loved me in the best way you knew how. And I, would, I want to be more authentic and raw in relationship with you and more direct and honest in how I feel. That's it. <laughs>